Welcome back to Brian Knows Movies. This week we're talking about Violent Night starring David Arbor as Santa. This movie's about him. It's about Santa who is disillusioned with the idea of Christmas and the spirit of Christmas. The holidays become so commercialized and everybody is so greedy. He's really starting to question his place in the world. Fast forward, there's a family called Lightstones. Jason Lightstone, his ex-wife Linda, and his little eight-year-old daughter Trudy. Jason's trying to get his family back together and and begs his ex-wife Linda to join him for the holidays with his family. Now, what we don't know at the time is that his family is absolutely loaded. They're all about all those things that Santa hates, the commercialization and consumerism and money, money, money. And also, everybody in this family is pretty terrible. Like, I don't know why Linda agreed to come to this thing knowing how bad these people are and how bad of an influence they would be <laughs> on her daughter. Anyway, these people are terrible all the way up to the matriarch, Gertrude, who is some sort oil tycoon it seems and has her hands in all these other different businesses and the holiday party is so plastic it's so fake they have a bunch of caterers that are serving them and they're being snappy with the caterers nobody's in the christmas spirit here except for uh little trudy and linda and jason who's trying to put on airs for their daughter anyway things get real serious when a group of ex-mercenaries attack the house. They, they have been planning to uh, do a heist on Christmas Eve to get to a vault that has $300 million in it. These ex-mercenaries are being led by Mr. Scrooge, John Leguizamo, who has been planning this day meticulously. He knows where the money is. He knows everything about Gertrude's security. So everything is going well, but unfortunately for Mr. Scrooge and the mercenaries, and also unfortunately for Santa, Santa's in the house. Santa is in the house trying to deliver presents for the family. Family. And he gets stuck in the house because when the mercenaries spray off a machine gun, it startles the reindeer. The reindeer are out of there quick. And Santa is stuck in the house with these mercenaries. He's trying to find a way to escape. He's not very uh, heroic, by the way, not only in the beginning of this movie. He's trying to find a way out of this. He sees he can't find a way out of the house um, safely. And also, he's compelled to help Trudy, who he recognizes as being one of the few kids that still has their Christmas spirit and still has their innocence and their joy. He goes on a mission to save Trudy and this family from these mercenaries, no matter how violent he has to get. He's fine with it because these guys are on his naughty list. I think that we have to recognize what the goal of the film is. This is a movie that's supposed to be light, it's supposed to be raucous, it's supposed to be a reimagining on what Christmas means and turn Santa into a different type of hero for adults. So going into it, don't take it that seriously. Also, you should know something about the filmmakers here. Director Thomas Ricola, he directed Dead. Snow, Hansel and Gretel. He's been known for doing these reimaginings in the past. Also, uh, the writing combo of Pat Casey and Jason Miller all worked on Sonic the Hedgehog. So you know that they know their humor and it's interesting to see them go into these dark spaces in this film. There is a lot of things that happen in this film that doesn't make sense. And I don't think that the writers or the directors really meant for it to make sense. In fact, there's a plot device they use, Christmas Spirit, that kind of explains why Santa's able to get out of some of the predicaments he's able to get out. He even says that, hey, I don't even know how this works. So this gives him this litany of powers that allow him to get out of tough spots. Now, they don't make him a god or knight and mormon or anything. I mean, Santa goes through it. He's definitely an everyman, John McClane of Die Hard, only with a Santa outfit on. So he's getting hurt. You know, he's having to sew himself up and all these types of things in these scenarios. But at least there's some get out of jail free cars because of the plot device. It's trying to have a commentary on the consumerism and how we should be getting back to the spirit of Christmas, which my I feel like every film has been doing for the last 40 years. What's the true meaning of Christmas? It's about family. It's about Christmas joy, so on and so forth. And it's like, they go in a different direction for it. For example, the character Trudy, she is so innocent beyond reproach. It's like the sweetest kid you could ever think of. And you're like, her father's pretty terrible. Her relatives are pretty terrible. They actually are saying really terrible things in front of her. And it's like, her innocence just cannot be soiled whatsoever. This is the cutest kid. It's like, it goes the extra mile to be very self-aware about these different plot mechanisms. And I thought that was a smart thing. I think that was a really good thing to do. So writing, directing, I think that they actually delivered on what they're trying to do. They were trying to give us a fun, rated R action Christmas movie that's very self-aware and doesn't take itself too seriously, but does a good job in delivering in the laughs and the action, and does a good job at least of keeping somewhat of a story together for us to care, specifically about Trudy and Santa more than anybody else. Speaking of Trudy and Santa, Santa Claus, David Arbor, 
Chef's Kiss, perfect casting for this to have a down his luck alcoholic Santa also be this hulking presence when it's time to get down and fight these bad guys. You really believe David Arbor in this role. You think about Hellboy in terms of the way that he's able to show his, his bulking presence over everything that's going on around him. Also, I don't know how much he did and how much his stunt double did, but the choreography and the fight scenes in this film, especially when he gets a hold of a certain weapon, you're surprised that they paid that much attention and that much effort into some of these fight sequences and fight scenes and I enjoyed that tremendously. Leah Brady is the kid that plays Trudy. I think that she does a great job. She gets a lot to do outside of just being innocent. She gets a chance to give her own homage to Home Alone. She's been in the little traps and contraptions to help Santa along the way. It's really really funny the way that she's able to commit to that part given what she does in this film. John Leguizama as Mr. Scrooge is the perfect antagonist and the perfect foil for Santa. He's lost his Christmas spirit ever since he was a kid. The reasons why are not really that compelling. He's really just a bad guy. So him trying to get this money out of Gertrude and not caring about who he has to take out, including Santa Claus to get it. He was perfect for this role. I also really like Beverly D'Angelo as Gertrude, the matriarch of this wealthy, evil family. And she's a hard ass. She could have been Mr. Scrooge herself. She's very mean to everybody, even little Trudy. She basically calls her a whore to her face <laughs> because she <laughs> they nicknamed her Trudy instead of saying her full name of Gertrude. Really? You're 70 something years old. She looks the part. She looks like she has money and she looks like she doesn't care about anybody around her. She has a little bit of an arc here, but she's really more there to be that comic relief of how bad and evil rich people can be. They went really practical with this movie. There are some special effects with the Christmas spirit, of course, and the flying of the reindeer and the Santa sleigh, of course. But what they did in terms of the booby traps that Trudy sets up what they do in terms of the fight scenes and how gory they get and the kill scenes that they do in this from all the different weapons they use. If the movie wasn't so light and the Christmas music wasn't playing in the background, you could almost say that this was a horror movie. It reminds you of a slasher film, how bloody some of these scenes are. And you love every minute of it. You soak it up like, oh my God, I can't believe Santa just did that. Oh my God, he's racked it up. Santa's background is what he can do. What You know, you start to feel this and you're into it the whole time. Anyway, what's my rating? See it, stream it, or skip it? I'm going to obviously say this is a see it. This is one of my favorite movies of the year. It's definitely one of my favorite movies of this season. I think that I had more fun there than many of the other films that I've seen pretty much this latter half, including The Menu. I thought it was more fun than The Menu, and I really enjoyed The Menu. There is a lot of serious stuff in the theater right now. You have The Fablemans. You have She Said. You have all these films that have these really heavy arcs going on, and more of those are coming from from the whale to Avatar. So this is a really nice palate cleanser for the theater experience. And I think that people are gonna to gravitate towards this film because of that. I think it's gonna make a lot of money. This might be the film that overtakes Black Panther in the box office. We'll see by the end of the weekend. But I'm saying go see it. It's not a Oscar movie, but when you think of what you want from an action and what you want from a thriller and what you want from a comedy, they did it very well. Kudos to them. <laughs> but hey, what do I know? I'm just a guy who loves movies. So if you're planning to go see Violent Night, let me know in the comment section below. I want to know what you thought about it. Was it just as effective for you? One thing I didn't mention earlier is that I do wish that there were a few more puns. I think they could have got a lot more puns in than what they did, but is it too bloody for you? Is it sacrilege to what we believe the holidays are supposed to be about? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe as soon as you can because it's going to help me continue to make this content for you. Also, please continue to share the video with your friends and share it on your social media. People may not have even heard that this movie's out yet, and I want to give them my opinion. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you at the theaters next week.